In this video, I'm going to show you a simple method to make super realistic looking rivers. Welcome to Zorbazorb Gaming, my name's Lachlan Linton Keen and welcome to part two of our realistic river tutorial. In the last video I showed you guys how to create a really nice realistic looking riverbed and today we're going to jump into doing the really fun part of building our rivers which is of course our water and our water effects. We're going to be using some epoxy resin and showing you guys a really simple technique to keep it nice and easy because I know everyone gets a little bit scared of resin pouring all over their table. So without further ado, let's jump in to pouring some resin. So we've got our grass down, we've got our stones down, and we've got our tufts down. The riverbed is looking absolutely awesome. It's time to start pouring resin. Now, obviously, if we pour resin in it right now, it's just going to all flow out the ends. So we need to seal the ends of our riverbank. This is an incredibly important step. If you screw this up, resin leaks everywhere and it goes all over your bench, uh, which is kind of, I guess, the big fear factor about water effects is that people kind of spill it everywhere and it's difficult to work with. But as long as you do the fundamentals right and don't rush the sealing stage, everything will work out fine. Resin is super friendly. So what we want to do is grab ourselves some medium bond masking tape and then our weld bond. You can use something like hot glue if you don't have this available, but a nice, strong, fast drying PVA or Mod Podge or Hobby tack something in that vein is uh, is absolutely where you want to be with this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab uh, our ends here and we're gonna glue all the way around make a nice thick glue layer right like a vein of glue that's gonna come around and then we're gonna place a, uh, a piece of masking tape this long on there fold it down and under and glue will be sealed all the way in under that masking tape and we should be absolutely right so what I'm gonna do is just rip the masking tape up so I've got it ready to go. So that should be about long enough. Let's just have that dangling off there at arm's reach. And now we're going to grab our side. Now remembering, of course, because I just did this one, all these stones are loose, so we don't want to move everything around too much, but we can fix stuff up after we've sealed it as well. I'll see if I can do this so you guys can watch me. So we just grab a nice big thick vein of glue all the way around. Make sure you get it nice and consistent. You don't want any holes that the resin can burrow and find a way through right up to the top of each peak. And don't worry about it being over thick. You can never have it too thick. We're gonna jump it in here. I'm just gonna sit it down like this and hopefully you guys will be able to see as I do this. We'll get this out of the way. Now, we're gonna wrap this in here. I'm gonna hit it at the top of the peaks and then I'm gonna push down so as I seal it, the PVA glue flows down and underneath. Keep that nice and firm, fantastic. And then running along the seam, get a nice bend in that masking tape and fold it in underneath. And hopefully that will take a whole bunch of glue underneath with it, which we can have a little look and see. And then we push that down nice and firm and get a good seal. There we go. Now we have both ends sealed, we are ready to start pouring our resin. That glue is gonna dry in about 20 to 25 minutes, so we'll wait until that has fully cooked off, and, uh, and then we can start getting into water effects. So we've done our riverbank, we've done our riverbed, we've sealed everything, and we're ready to get into some water effects. Now the first thing that you'll notice here is that I've got a bit of a setup going. Uh, I've got one board that I've actually already started, and this is the board I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, this is actually one of my normal river sections, just so that you can see how the whole riverbed flows. And you'll notice I've got two pieces of foam core board pushed right up against the end, and then they're jammed in against a couple of really heavy paint tins. So even though we've done that whole seal with the PVA and the tape, I'm still applying pressure to make sure that I give that seal the best chance of holding as possible. Uh, I did this one about 15 minutes ago and it's looking like the seal is holding absolutely beautifully so I'm pretty happy with our sealing technique and uh, you guys can see over there that it's working and hopefully a couple of minutes into this I won't start screaming as this one leaks everywhere but I'm pretty sure we're looking good. So what are we going to do for our water effects? There are a lot of different water effects products. There's specific branded stuff like the water effects by Woodland Scenics and various other hobby companies but for me the best ever looking stuff is just resin. 
Resin is a fantastic clear liquid. It just dries completely transparent. You can mix things into it, you can color it, you can do all sorts of stuff with it, and it's really great to work with, and, and it looks like water. It looks amazing. There are lots of different types of resins. They kind of break down into three main classes. You've got polyurethane, polyester, and epoxy. The one that we want to be working with pretty much at all times when we're making terrain is epoxy resin, because the other two, uh, particularly polyester, are solvents and have solvents in them that dissolve all foams, particularly polystyrene. So when we're using resin, we want to use epoxy resin because you can just drop it straight on top of polystyrene and it's totally safe. Of course, our riverbanks and the underneath of our riverbed is completely polystyrene. So if we poured polyester resin, it would just dissolve the entire project. And trust me, I've had that happen before. It is really, really sad and quite deflating. Uh, so we're going to be using epoxy resin. I nearly said polyester then. I'm tripping myself out. So what I've got here is um, a two-part epoxy resin. Basically, a lot of epoxy resins are pretty much the same. Lots of different companies do them. I just get this resin from my local uh, kind of casting and molding supplier called Barnes here in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, and this is just called epoxy cast. It's essentially a two-part resin uh, and you mix 50% uh, of one to 100% of the other. So it's a two to one ratio uh, of the two ingredients. You mix it all up. You've got about 30 to 40 minutes of pot life, which is kind of the time that it's workable. You're able to pour it before the viscosity really starts to change and then it takes it says about three and a half hours, but sometimes it can be a bit longer than that, four, four and a half hours, particularly if you're doing thick pours to really cook off and go completely hard. But I mean, that's still a pretty fantastic work time. We're not talking hours and hours and hours here. You can you know, set it in the morning and by the afternoon after lunch, it's totally sweet. So what we need is a mixing cup. We need our two parts of epoxy resin. Uh, we need another mixing cup. This is our measuring cup, I should say. And then we need, of course, some gloves and some glasses and some uh, masks, but I'm going to be sneaky and not wear them so I can keep talking to you guys. Uh, but always work in a well-ventilated space and make sure that you're wearing all of your PPE. I'm going to keep this crap off my hands to start with. Now this is a reasonably, reasonably sizable riverbed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, 75... Yeah, we'll do 75 mils of part B and 150 mils of part A, uh, which will give us about 225 mils of, of creek and of river. And if that's not enough, we can always just pour more on top. But I also don't like to put heaps and heaps and heaps in straight up. In case you find a leak, you're just going to lose more and more resin. So it's kind of helpful to do a couple of sort of two-step uh, molds. So let's just make sure I've got my mixing stick out of the way. Now this is part B, so this is the smaller part, as you can see, by the different size. And we want to measure this down to 75. I'm just going to get down to eye level so I can absolutely nail this. 75 is there. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And then I'll just dump that straight into my mixing pail. And I'm just going to keep using the same measuring cup. Just do note that as soon as you pour part A into this measuring cup now, obviously it's going to start reacting. And you'll often find that after four or five casts, uh, your measuring cup starts to become slightly inaccurate because you've got bits of thick resin crusted on the bottom of it. Now, what did we say? That was 75, so I need 150 of part A. So to give you guys an idea, this is, uh, what, a kilo and half a kilo, so a 1.5 kilo kit, and this cost me 66 Australian dollars. Uh, and this is, it should, what have we got here? I've used about three-fifths of it, so I've probably got two pours left, and I will have done one, two, three bits of river, so I can sort of, with that $66, get about five lengths of river done to a reasonable depth. Um, I'm a big sucker for nice, deep resin pours. I love really, really nice, kind of thick rivers, so that's why I'm using quite a lot of resin, whereas some people like to just use a little bit to hint at the water. I really like to make it look as realistic as possible. So I've just chucked uh, the part A in with the part B, all into my mixing pot, Nice and simple. Let's make sure you get everything out of uh, the measuring cup. I often just like to leave it sitting there because we have got half an hour, but in the interest of keeping this uh, instructional element rather speedy, uh, we won't do that. And now we're just going to give it a good old stir. Very nice. So 225 mils. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a very, very, very tiny drop of uh, some Vallejo acrylic paint. Now, there are specific resin uh, 
tints that you can use that work really well, but you can kind of get away with doing a little bit of acrylic paint. It doesn't blend perfectly. Uh, it it for, essentially forms tiny, tiny, tiny little micro particles mixed up in the resin. But for the look that we want, which is kind of a disturbed, muddy river, that's actually pretty awesome. So I've got here just some khaki from the Vallejo Game Color range. Give that a good shake. And I'm talking the tiniest drop ever. I do not want to put a lot of paint in here. I just want a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. There we go. Come on. Nothing too big. And drop that in. Beautiful. And then I'll just throw one of my gloves back on and grab the mixing stick and absolutely beat the crap out of it. We really want to mix this pigment really, really, really well in so that it is nice and mixed. We don't want to have any kind of big blobs of particle. Lots and lots of mixing. There we go, really work it over. There we go, that is looking fantastic. And that's pretty much it guys, we have come to the big moment where we're pouring our water effects. Now this is basically pour and watch. Uh, you don't need to do any kind of big complex long pour techniques to pull out bubbles. It's got three and a half hours of cure time. The bubbles are going to come to the surface. We can get rid of them a little bit with a blowtorch as well to help it kind of cook off and, and get rid of the bubbles when we get there. But in terms of pouring, we pretty much just put it in and go and then hope that it doesn't leak everywhere. So let's do it, eh? Uh, I'm going to start in the center and let it flow out to the edges because I don't particularly want to put any undue stress on those edges by, you know, having a massive amount of resin crash up against them in a wave. So I'm just doing a nice consistent pour and letting it flow at its own rate. Now straight away I'm thinking that I'm probably going to want this a bit deeper. So I will probably go back and top this up a little bit with a, an extra pass but we'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna put a little bit more down here. Now, of course, the resin is self-leveling, so it's it's gonna look natural. You don't have to kind of go chasing it, but often it uh, does form a pretty bold meniscus, which is the kind of surface tension across the top of the fluid, and when it comes up against hard surfaces, it sometimes looks a little bit funky. So uh, let me just get the last of this resin out. There's still a little bit more in there. We wanna savor every drop. There we go, now getting it out of there without dripping it on the static grass. Now what we want to do is take our stick here and just go and prod all of the sides anywhere where it's not kind of blending perfectly so that we get a really nice even looking meniscus. Now conveniently, because of all the little rock work and plants and things, it's actually looking pretty good. So I am pretty happy with that. So now we're just going to let it start to cure for a little bit. And then if we get any serious bubbles, I'll come back and I'll show you guys how to treat it as it cures with a bit of blow torching. Uh, but aside from that, we are almost done and we've got some pretty sweet looking rivers. Let's see how they start to cure and we'll come right back. So we've had a bunch of really successful resin pours and everything's looking really fantastic. All that we've got left to do now is to peel off all of our end caps and uh, make sure that we repair any of the damage that that will do because obviously our glue seal is going to rip up any of the paint. And then we've got a couple of little leaks that happened in different spots uh, pretty much because I accidentally put a little bit too much resin in. So sometimes it sort of flows off down the side but it actually creates quite an interesting effect. So if you get any sort of serious resin pooling all you need to do is kind of trim it down to size, put a bit of PVA down and just apply some static grass over the top and it will blend right in with the board. So I'm going to apply the finishing touches to getting these guys ready and then we're going to have some pretty fantastic looking rivers. Well there you have it guys, a fantastic realistic looking river which I'm really happy with. I hope you guys are stoked with how it's turned out. The riverbed's got a really nice effect to it that just looks gorgeous through the resin water effects and I think overall it's a really stunning finish. If you guys liked it, let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions or want to see any other stuff, make sure you let us know. Like the video if you enjoyed it. It does help us know what content you guys are enjoying so we can do more of what you like. Make sure you check out all the other terrain tutorials here on the channel. We've got absolutely bucket loads and subscribe if you're new around here because we have got so much on the horizon. Lots of cool stuff backed up that we've got to show you guys so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Uh, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time right here on Zorba Zorb Gaming. Cheers guys.